Hey folks, Sheila here from Design Files. In today's video, I thought I would share some great tips that you can keep in mind to ensure that whenever you're trying to place artwork within your mood board designs, that you have the placement accurate and also the scale of each art piece accurate so that you're giving your client a very realistic and clear idea for how all of this is gonna to come together within the final design. Now the tips that I'm gonna share within this video come in really handy, especially if you are dealing with gallery walls and you've got a number of different sized art pieces that you're trying to map out and you really wanna make sure that everything is accurate and to scale within your mood board designs. So let's go ahead, we'll jump right in and I'll show you exactly how I would do this process. Now the first thing that's really important here is we need to first start with the overall size of the wall. And one of the easiest ways to do that is to jump into the Design Files 3D floor planner and just draw out a floor plan of your client's space. Um, you'll be able to get all of the wall measurements exact. And once you have your floor plan in place, if I jump into the 3D perspective mode, you can see here that I'm dealing with just an empty room render here. I'm not adding any furniture at all. But what this does allow me to do is because I've created this empty room render, I can now start mapping out rectangular shapes on the wall to give me a clear idea for where all of this artwork is gonna go. And I'll know exactly what size it is and the distance between the edge of the artwork, the edge of the wall and the distance between. So here's how that works. When you have created your empty room render, you can just click on one of the walls that you're gonna place the artwork on. You're gonna see that it's highlighted. You're gonna click on the little edit icon right here, and that's gonna bring you into the wall editor. Within the wall editor, this is where you're actually gonna be able to go ahead and add paint colors to your walls. So if you want to, you can just click on any of the paint color options and apply it to the wall. You're gonna see that it fills it in. I'm gonna hit undo here because I'm actually happy with this light mint green color. And you also have the ability to add trim. So you can add crown molding and base and chair uh, rail, and you just click into any of those and you'll be able to select the option you want. And once you have the option added in, you'll also be able to change the finish of it. If you wanna get a better sense for how to use the wall editor, jump into the uh, video tutorial library. You're gonna see that there is a detailed video that talks all about adding trim and paint colors to your walls using the wall editor. In this video, I'm gonna bypass that for now because I really wanna focus on how you will place artwork, how you're gonna map out exactly where the artwork's gonna go. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna use the shape option over here. Select the rectangular option. That's gonna allow you to create these rectangular shapes on the wall. For each shape, you'll be able to set the exact size. So I can see that this is one foot eight inches and one foot four and a quarter inches. And I can just drag on the, click and drag on the edges of the actual shape to shorten it if I want. Um, and I'm just using my mouse to kind of drag it in and out. When I have the art piece in the correct size that I want, the next thing you wanna do is to just apply a color to it. So we just need to have this, it doesn't matter what color it is, you're just basically applying a color to it so that you have um, kind of like a, like a template, like a, a guide for where the artwork is gonna sit within the wall. So you can see that I've done that for each and every one of these ones. I've added in six different art pieces. They're all the same size. I wanted to have three inches between, and I just kind of wanted to center them within the wall. So you can see that I've got the distance here and the distance here are the same. Off by about a quarter of an inch because that's just the way that the wall worked out. But essentially, I've got this centered within the wall. Now, I can either drag these art pieces around like this if I want to using my mouse. So I'm just holding down the left button on my mouse and dragging the art, or the rectangular shape around. Or if I wanna get really accurate, then I can use the left, right, and up, down arrows on my keyboard to just move this item around until I have it exactly where I want it to be. So let's say that this is the layout that I'm going for. Now that I have this, I'm just gonna hit save. And you can see these rectangular shapes are showing on the wall now. So what I would do is if I wanted to use this as an empty backdrop for my mood board design, I'm just gonna go up here to hit save. I'm gonna create a render. I'm gonna zoom in and just kind of get this into the position that I want. And when you're happy with the overall position, then what you can do is, let's just move this over a little bit here. Um, when you're happy with your overall position, then you can just go ahead and you can start a render. So let the, let the system do its thing. It's going to create an empty rendering for you that you're gonna be able to then download to your computer as a JPEG. So you're gonna click this button up here to download the JPEG image. You're gonna see that it's saving to your computer. 
And that's the image that you're going to upload into the mood board library so that you can drag it out onto your design and use it as a backdrop for your mood board. But before we close out of the 3D floor planner, you definitely want to use this render in the image. You want to save this rendered image because if you decide that you don't like this layout and you want to come back in and you're going to rearrange it a little bit, it's easier for you to just come back and have this already saved and make any minor changes that you need to make versus creating it from scratch again. So go ahead, use the render in the project. When you click that button, it's going to bring you back to this view where you're going to save the render to the project. So you just hit the save button. The system's going to go ahead and it's going to save this render. So you'll always be able to come back to this. And if you want to make any changes, you can, you can rearrange it and then save a new rendered image. Okay. So now that that has saved, let's go ahead. We're going to back out of the 3d floor planner. And what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to jump into the mood board software. Now you can see that I've already loaded in that empty room rendered image. But what you would want to do to bring that in for your design is you're going to go into my library in my library. You're going to switch over to, you don't want to add it to your library. This is where you would basically add in any products that you're going to use over and over again. But what you can do is you could save the empty room render, uh, image to your project items, or you could save it to your assets. It doesn't matter. You could save it to either or, but you've got an upload button here. You're going to click the upload button. You're going to select the file from your computer and you'll just give it a name. So you can just call it empty render if you want. Once you've done that, you'll, you can save it into your library. So you can see it's over here. I just drag this out onto my mood board design and you can see here, if I zoom out, I just filled it up to fit the entire mood board canvas. So I'm going to hit undo just to line this back up, but I scaled it up to fill out the full mood board canvas. And then because I've got this and I've got my rectangular shapes here where I know exactly where to place my artwork, then I can just start dragging out my artwork and placing them directly over top of these shapes so that I know exactly how big to, uh, how big to make each art piece. So if it, my art piece was like this, I could come in, line it up with the edge of the uh, rectangular shape and I'm going to scale it down until it's the perfect size to cover that rectangular, uh, shape that I had added to the wall. And I would do that for each and every one of my art pieces. So by the end of it, I'll be able to see all of them laid out. I'm going to know that they're the exact size that I want because I measured my art pieces. I created those exact rectangular shapes at that accurate size within the 3d floor planner. I mapped out exactly where I wanted everything to go. And then I was able to just layer in each art piece over top so that I can see exactly how this is all going to come together for my final mood board design. So there you have it. It's pretty simple steps. Create your empty rendering uh, using the 3D floor planner. Map out exactly where you want each and every art piece to go. In order to do this, you do need to know the size of the art pieces. So you will have to have those dimensions. Then you can map out your rectangular shapes change up the orientation if you like, and then bring that empty rendering into the mood board software so you can layer in the actual art pieces and show your client exactly what this final look is going to, is going to look like. So I hope you found these tips helpful. Of course, if you do have any questions at all about using the wall editor within the 3d floor planner, or just if you're looking for additional tips for how to map out your art pieces, then always feel free to reach out. Uh, we are more than happy to help. Thanks for watching.